All right, well, that is our Call Online Tools a session for tonight, which brings us through to our main billing for tonight. This is the part I'm really looking forward to, and uh, that is all about uh, how to use uh, LinkedIn uh, as a lead machine, so really understanding it as a lead machine. So our guest speaker tonight is uh, Kylie Chown. Uh, for those that don't know Kylie, she is a social media trainer and strategist, and uh, she is the current number two LinkedIn expert in uh, Asia Pacific. So uh, she's got over 15 years experience and has worked with literally thousands of people to help them grow their businesses uh, and their careers using LinkedIn and uh, managing their digital brand. So she obviously knows what she's talking about. She has featured in the Huffington Post uh, Social Media Examiner, which is a large online publication. Um, she has uh, been a contributor to Smallville Official, uh, HRM Online, uh, and uh, various others as well too. Uh, she was awarded the best use of LinkedIn and was the finalist for the best social media educator uh, from the Social Media Marketing Institute. And she's uh, been awarded Mentor of the Year uh, in, uh, well, in marketing, so a silver award in the Stevie's uh, Award. Now, she's been certified in Australia as the first media crisis uh, advisor uh, and um, also certified as a social branding analyst uh, by Reach uh, or the Reach platform in uh, USA. So she's the founder of My Digital Brand and she uh, spends her days helping businesses and professionals and corporates create a world-class uh, digital brand. Uh, if you do want to meet her, then she does host uh, LinkedIn Local in uh, the Brisbane CBD. So that is a uh, taking things uh, offline from the uh, online and you actually get to meet some of your LinkedIn uh, people up in um, in Brisbane, if you happen to be around there. Uh, LinkedIn Local is all over the world. So if you're not sure what it is, uh, you can probably Google it and you can find uh, a, you know, a LinkedIn Local beside you. But Kylie is responsible for uh, running uh, the uh, Brisbane one. So let's put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Kylie Chow. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Thanks so much for having me um, on your show. And thank you for your tips. I literally wrote them all down. So um, they were really helpful. So thank you. Um, and like you said, tonight we're going to talk about turning LinkedIn into a lead generating machine. But before I do that, I just wanted to share an experience that I had uh, with a lady. And this was probably about towards the end of last year. Um, and I spoke to her on Zoom and she was telling me about her background and her experience. And she was just, she was really frustrated because she was in a service-based business. She knew that she had the skills to do a really, really good job. So she was actually an accountant. Um, she'd come from corporate um, and she'd gone out into her own business. She knew that she had the skills to do an amazing job, but she was just really kind of confused and frustrated because she wasn't getting the leads and she wasn't getting the inquiries that she thought she would, you know, given the depth of experience and given her background. So what I did is we popped her name into Google and she does have an alias for tonight. Um, but for the purpose of tonight, when we popped her name into Google, what came up first was her LinkedIn profile. And unfortunately for her, what was on her profile didn't align with her most amazing skills and experience. So there was a real disconnect between how awesome she was, her skills, her experience and her credibility and what was coming up online. So the key in that is really understanding that LinkedIn and what we talk about tonight is really key to your digital first impression. And now more than ever, people are going to learn about you before they uh, learn about you online, before they meet you in person. Uh, it actually becomes an anchor point for them. So it's, it's really kind of hard to change that perception uh, once it's been formed. So our agenda tonight, there's five core, talk, core topics we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the significance of LinkedIn. So I'm just going to share a little bit about where LinkedIn is um, at the moment um, from a B2B perspective. But I did note that, um, Ron, you said B2C earlier, and I absolutely agree. If you are targeting B2C, then absolutely those people are either on LinkedIn as professionals or potential business owners. So absolutely still think it relates um, in your situation. Um, I'm going to go through some of the profile enhancements um, and really look at how you can get your profile found and how you can optimize your profile. So ideally what we want is we want people finding our profile and coming to us. I was having a chat to Nick before our session. We were talking about messaging. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you've all had those 
really kind of salesy messages and that's definitely not what, what this is about. Um, profile optimization is about optimizing your profile so people are coming to you. Uh, we're going to talk about strategic content calendars, so how we can develop a content calendar and how that helps move people through their different buying stages and what they are. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about compelling outreach, so uh, how we can, if we are crafting messages, how we can do that in a way that gets response. Um, and one of my most favorite topics uh, is data-driven strategy. So one of the things I do really like about social media is that there's a lot of data and there's a lot of statistics available. So I'm just going to take you through where you can find these data, where you can find this data, where you can find these statistics and what they actually mean. Now, I've done many, many of these sessions and I do find that we end up with lots and lots of questions. So I've got about 45 minutes of content that I'll take you through tonight which will leave us um, ample time for questions. But if you do have questions as we're going, just pop them in the chat because we can answer them as we go. Um, but I typically find I'll, I'll do them at the end if it's off, if it's not aligned with the topic that we're, uh, that we're talking about, but definitely put your questions in as we go. And I did also ask Nick how engaged, I was like, will they answer me if I ask some questions in the chat? And he said they would absolutely answer me if I asked some questions in the chat. So um, I will be doing that and I hope that you do. So um, LinkedIn significance, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, um, but it's just kind of understanding where it's at at the moment. So uh, LinkedIn last year, uh, and at least this year, I'm still getting into uh, 2024. LinkedIn last year uh, said that they've got, they're currently at 1 billion members in more than 200 countries and territories worldwide. So really looking um, at continual expansion and, and continual growth. And if we look at the, I guess, the benefits or some of the, differences between the between LinkedIn and some of the other platforms. So again, I think there's absolutely a place for other platforms um, as well. And so I think it's just identifying, you know, the benefits of LinkedIn and then developing your strategy to align with those. But essentially it's from my perspective, it's really the only network at this point in time that's set up purely from a work or a professional uh, perspective or capacity. So absolutely can see the benefit in Facebook and Instagram for bit for business as well. But when I go to Facebook and I go to Instagram, I'm going there in a more casual um, context. I'm also going to see what my family, what my friends are doing um, and connect with people that way. Also connect with business community there. But when I go to LinkedIn, I'm pretty much purely going there from a work or a business professional capacity. So when I go to LinkedIn, I'm not necessarily going to see what, you know, my family and my friends are doing. It's very much from that work perspective. Um, and that in itself is going to influence the strategy, which we'll talk about as well. Um, it's all about connection and collaboration. Um, so it allows us to connect and collaborate with different uh, profiles and different users. Uh, HubSpot, HubSpot did a report that said it was three times uh, more trusted than other platforms and typically our users are in the higher income bracket. But from my perspective, one of the advantages of LinkedIn is still the opportunity to get a lot of organic reach and a lot of organic visibility. So with the clients that I work with, I absolutely have some that have an ad spend and that's a component of their strategy. But to be honest, it's probably about anywhere. It varies, but it's typically between 15 and 20 percent. And these businesses are typically a lot. They're, they're larger corporate type businesses. So if I look at uh, small to medium businesses and business owners, you know, absolutely you can get results on LinkedIn organically. Um, so without having to do an ad spend. And that's really one of the reasons why I like it. Um, and I also think too, then what this allows is it allows us to level the playing field. So it makes everything a bit more level. You know, everyone has the same um, opportunity, regardless if you do have, you know, capacity for a, for a paid budget or not. So, I just wanted to kind of be light on that because I think people are more kind of interested in, in tactics and strategy, but I do think it's important just to understand where it's at at the moment. So I do want to talk about now profile enhancements. So learn to optimize your LinkedIn profile for impact and discoverability. And the keywords there are at impact and discoverability, and we'll talk about that tonight. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to ask you just to pop into the chat. Like if you think about your personal LinkedIn profile, like what's your number one challenge when it comes to that? So, you know, is, is it that you're not comfortable with how the profile looks? You're not sure on how to present it? Um, some people might say that they, yeah, they feel like it's not accurately representing them. So I'm just going to give you a second just to pop in there. 
kind of where you're at, which will help me because we could talk about LinkedIn for hours and hours. So if I kind of know where you're at and what's happening for you, we can um, we can we can go that way as well. You don't know how to don't know how to best set it out. Okay. The issue I have is that we've created a business profile off my director's personal LinkedIn account and I don't think it gives the company enough visibility. Okay, cool. So we're looking at company and personal crossover. Yeah. Excellent. I'm just reading some of them out if you can't see the chat. Time to post, what to post. Yeah, we'll talk about time to post and what to post. That's a good question. Not really sure how to optimise it. Well, that's good because hopefully you'll know how to optimise it after today, posting regularly. Yeah, cool. So we can um, talk about posting. Cheryl, your questions might is very specific, so we might come back to that, but I understand what you're saying as well. How to show up to people with them, first of all, not sure how to optimise. Yeah, great. How to add value, business. Yeah, cool. Okay, business versus personal, that comes up a lot as well. Excellent. Thank you. Um, if you're still typing, keep typing in what sort of posts are best for LinkedIn. That's a good question. There's a lot of different content media types at the moment, so we can definitely talk about that. Excellent. Well, Ron, you said business versus personal profile, so good timing. Here's the slide I prepared earlier, um, all about uh, business and personal profiles and the differences. So I think this is a really key um, element to understand. So both of these pages have different intent and a different purpose. So your personal profile, and I've included the, uh, sorry, the company page. Um, I've included our LinkedIn local company page. That's what it looks like. But the company page is very much around representing the organization. It's around brand awareness and credibility. So our content is different on our, on our company page. One of the key differences here between your company page and your personal profile is that your company page has followers and your personal profile has connections. And the reason that that's relevant is a connection is a two-way relationship. So if I reach out to Nick and I want to connect and he accepts, then we're connected, we can have a conversation. Um, I can see his content and things like that. On a company page, if I'm following a company page, so if I'm following uh, our LinkedIn local page, I can't necessarily have a conversation with that page and it's very much a one-way uh, communication channel. So basically the page is putting out content. Obviously there's engagement in posts and things like that, but essentially that's one of the biggest differences there. Um, it includes different sections. I'm not going to go through um, all of these tonight. Um, it links all the employees together. So again, someone's mentioned that around their, um, around their manager and I'll come back to that question. Um, and you can share different content here. So blog posts, videos, updates, and things like that. So again, it's slightly different content strategy there. And we'll jump into that as we go through tonight. Um, in relation to uh, personal profiles, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit different. So um, I've got Nick's profile up here. I thought it was a really good example. So it's very much representing Nick. Uh, he's got a more personal tone. He's got connections. Uh, it's got different um, sections and he can reshare the content. Um, Alison's got a really great question, which is, um, as a one-person show, do we need a business page and a personal page? Look, I think that at the end of the day, that's up to you. Um, when I was in that position, personally, I did have a personal uh, LinkedIn profile. I did also have a company page. Uh, part of my thinking was that there is only one URL for every company page. So even so, I wanted to claim it so I had it so that then no one else could go and um, secure that LinkedIn URL for the company page. So the sim as similar as you would maybe a website. So that was one of my reasons. Um, and also, again, it just allows you another channel to get your content in front of uh, your audience. So again, I think to answer your question, Alison, it comes down to obviously your resources, how much time you've got to spend on all of this. But I think. For most people, I would say have both, um, even if it's just to secure that digital asset or that digital real estate and having that different channel. What you might find, though, is that you might find that your content's very similar. In a larger organisation, their content could be very different. Um, in a smaller business, your content's probably going to be quite similar as well. Um, it also allows you to build out a um, something that you can sell later. So down the track, for example, 
you know, if we've got a LinkedIn, if I was doing all my LinkedIn local stuff through my personal profile, um, then it's through there, whereas LinkedIn local is building out um, its own digital asset as well. Um, Oliver, do you have your hand up? Did you want to jump in? Uh, yeah, I just want to ask a question. If, I'm, yeah, of if I've already got um, a fair few connections in my personal LinkedIn, yeah. uh, upwards of like 400, would that be a good strategy to start posting stuff about my business on my personal page because I have those connections already? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we go, I would generally advise people to go where it's, to go to like, to go where it's easiest. Do you know what I mean? So what you might do is if you wanted to build out that business page or that company page, set it up, put the content through there and then be sharing it out to your personal network. So yeah. then they're getting vis visibility of it via the company page. Okay, cool. So create yeah. a separate one and then link it. Yeah. To okay. Yeah, because the challenge is, is if we've got a company page that's new, you know, and um, if it doesn't have the followers there, then you're not going to, it's not going to get the visibility. So part of it will be building out that audience. Yep. On the company page also, though, you can go and invite people to follow that company page manually. So you can scroll through and do that as well to build that out. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. But I think from developing a business asset perspective, having that company page is something if you did decide to sell, you know, you can sell a company, you could, you could transfer ownership of a company page more so than a um, personal profile. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Awesome. All right, cool. So um, the next two types of profiles that we have, um, so we've got our company profiles and we've got our personal profiles. And just to make it a little bit more interesting, within the personal profiles, we've got two types of personal profiles we can have. So we can have the standard LinkedIn profile. So that's the one that everybody um, had at the start. And then LinkedIn brought out what's called creator mode. So this comes up a lot. I get people saying, oh, should I be in creator mode or should I just have the normal profile? And again, I don't have a I don't have a prescriptive answer around everyone for a lot of things around LinkedIn, but particularly this, I don't have a point of view which is everyone should be in creator mode or everyone should do this or should do that, because I think it's very different to your situation. But I think if you understand kind of where you're at and then what the benefits are, then you can pick what's right for you. So the standard profile, I think is really more around networking um, because it's really around, it, it helps with connections of, with you connecting with others and, and it's focused on that networking perspective. And one of the reasons why is if I go to someone's profile and they're in um, standard LinkedIn profile format, the default button there is connect. If I go to someone in creator mode, so my profile's in creator mode, it defaults to follow. Now, personally, I'd rather people connect with me, so drop down and hit that connection button, but sometimes people don't know how and they don't do it. Um, again, I can go and see who's following and, and proactively reach out to them as well. But essentially the standard one is really, like I said, it's more around people who are looking to network, um, focus on connecting with others and it has the position at the top of the profile so the layout's quite different. Um, if we look at the creator mode, the difference is there. It's, it's really around kind of building a following and having that content strategy um, and, and content as well. So there's different things that you get with uh, creator mode. Uh, you get your LinkedIn newsletter, you can do audio events and there's a whole lot of content, um, content um, options that you can get. Um, and like I said, it defaults, it changes that connect button to follow. So if you are in creator mode, because like like I said before, personally, I'd rather have connections. So I am hesitating with this because I'm going to say I do it and I haven't actually done it for a couple of weeks. But what I do like to do is go through those followers and maybe reach out to them as well um, to connect with them, right? Because I'd rather have connections and conversations. But I do like creator mode because I, it gives me my LinkedIn newsletter and other things as well. It also allows me to um, highlight content at the top of my profile. Um, and there's different, um, there's different um, tools and, and there's also different insights. So sometimes it's interesting just to flick over to create a mode to get the data um, and then flick back. It also allows you to add your talks about hashtags. I'm going to so, leave and come back again, don't Oh, we're right. Cool. Um, yeah, it also allows you to have what's called the talks about hashtags. So um, we'll talk about those when we get into content. But they're the types of profiles that we got. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure our profiles are discoverable. Um, so that then what we, so you go back and forth. No, so personally, I don't go back and forth. I stay in creator mode. But if you were in standard mode and you wanted to get access to the data, you could jump in to get that. 
So when we look at data and statistics, then um, I can show you that what you get in creator mode. But I stay in creator mode. I don't. I don't. There's no reason for me personally to to go between the both of them. Um, but some people would if they want access to that. So what makes your profile discoverable? So like I said, with all this, it's a lot easier for me if I have people like finding me and coming to me. So if I did a search in Google, um, if I put in LinkedIn Trainer Brisbane, my personal profile comes up first in the search results and then my company page comes up second in the search results. And that's because of how I've set up my profile and there's some really key things with that. So if you have a look at the URL and that's the www, how many... Did I say three W's? W, W, yeah, three W's part. Um, so, and that's this bit up here. And the default, when you set up your LinkedIn profile, it'll have your name and it'll have uh, like random numbers and letters after it. So what I've done is if you go over to the right-hand side, it'll say update your URL. And I put in training in Brisbane. Now, to be fair, it's actually quite easy for me because LinkedIn's in the main bit of the URL, right? So that actually makes it a lot easier for me. But, and that's why I don't have to put it in. So then I get LinkedIn here and then I get training in Brisbane. Um, and then throughout the profile, I, if you look at it, you can see that I've structured it in such a way that's going to help with search engine optimization. So for example, if I look at my headline, which is this bit here, um, I've got LinkedIn in here um, one, two, three times. And that's very much by design, not by accident. But it also, with all of this, it also needs to make sense, right? So it's got to be sensible. You can't just have the keywords in there. But there is a specific reason that I've got it in there um, a significant amount of times and also why I've got it towards the front of the, um, the, front of the headline. So making sure that you've got the words that you want to be found for towards the front and just structuring it that way. And then within different sections of the profile. So also in the about section, we want to make sure we've got keywords there. And we want to make sure that when we're doing um, our experience section, we've got our keywords there. We'll talk more about that. Now, um, someone asked about headline. Who asked about headline? How to set up a headline, Stanley? So great question. So um, the reason why headlines are really important, and if you change nothing else on your headline, if you're not happy with your, oh gosh, my words are jumbled tonight. If you, if you change nothing on your profile, um, I would tonight at least maybe think about your headline. And the reason why your headline is so important is it follows you everywhere. So if you do a post on LinkedIn, people see your photo, your name, and your headline. If you do a comment on LinkedIn, people see your photo, your name, and your headline. And if you engage, people see that. So it's really um, relevant there. Now, the de again, the default position there is your job title and where you work. So if I just had like, um, you know, director and my business name, that really doesn't give people much insight into what I do or how I can help them. It also contributes significantly to you being found in search results as well. So again, so like I said earlier, you can see I've got LinkedIn in there um, numerous times and, and, and there's a reason for that. Um, but also around positioning. So there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Um, I'm really focused on search at the moment. So that's why mine's like this. So I'm very much going for a branded headline. But I do talk about kind of who I help and, and then what the outcome is. So that's also one I see a lot or um, people will like a lot where you've got, you know, it might be, you know, accountant um, helping small businesses and then what the specific result is. So either there's two, there's a few ways you can do it. The two that I will see clients do the most is similar to mine, where it's very much around more of a branding statement and also focused on search, which is what mine is. Or if they're not so focused on search, they might have a little bit of search, but they'll do that, you know, helping who to achieve what. That's a really easy way to, to do it. Um, because you can see that there as well. Um, just checking my questions. Yeah, I'm going to come back to your question. That's a good question. Um, and then your featured section. So this is something that you can have. And um, like I said, creator mode uh, gives you more um, content on that there as well. What's the new Get Verified tab? That's a good question. I'm going to go to that. I was looking at that. So I seen something and it said people who are verified get 60% more views than those who aren't. But when I looked at the process of getting verified, you actually have to upload, it's either your passport or your driver's license. And I was like, I don't know that I want to do that. So I hear yeah, Paul's shaking his head. So I'm feeling like he's agreeing with me. 
I was like, I don't want to up like again, it's a personal decision, but um for me, I wasn't comfortable uploading my driver's license or um passport. Paul, do you want to jump in on that? Yeah, they've really they've tightened up, not just yeah. checking, but I was trying to do it with a, um, a friend trying to get her sorted on Google business. Yeah. Uh, and the same deal to to get to get verified. Yeah. But no way I'm putting yeah, yeah password uh, uh, sorry um, um, the passport and and a photograph of the passport uh, that, 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 yeah. you know it just sounded like a bit of a scam going on there yeah I wasn't like personally I'm like oh I'm not mm. comfortable with that and I don't know how you're yeah. justifying 60 percent more views like where's that data coming from yeah but, yeah mm. it's interesting I'm like yeah no nah. and that's why if you look at mine mine's not and it's because of that um thanks for sharing it's because of that, because I'm not um I'm not comfortable kind of putting that in. It's yeah, just a personal thing. So I'm glad you asked a good question. Um about section again, I'm not going to go through all of this in great detail, but from a findability perspective, um just making sure we've got keywords in here. So again, you'll see I've got if you look at it, you'll start to see what I've done. I've got LinkedIn, I'm focused on LinkedIn and events. So I've got LinkedIn and I've got events in here a lot. Um, and the awards make it really easy to get the keywords in there because they're in the title, right? So, um, again, having that mixture in there. Um, one of the things I do do as well with the experience section, um, and I find this works well. So in your experience section, you can have like your company and then typically people might just only have one um, experience section entry talking about what they've done. Um, but I've actually, I break mine down into different services. Um, so I've got workshops and training, I've got strategy workshops and in-house presentations. Um, again, I've done this to help with search because these all help me um, come up in search results, but also it gives me more characters. So I can talk about, for example, strategy workshops uh, in a lot more detail um, and also um, the training as well. So again, and I mean, I've got this for 13 years, but if you are, and so it's quite, so basically, by doing it like this as well, is it helps kind of populate that page with just what I'm doing now. So it's not just one entry around this and then what I was doing like 13 years ago and 15 years ago, it's very much focused. Um, and I've set up my other one. If you have a look at the profile, I've done it quite specifically. I think I've done the other one to audiences, just as an example for people to see, um, see which way it goes. And Ron said, uh, yeah, Ron, what happened to you? My profile was hacked. Yeah, you had to go through it. Yeah, I think absolutely, I appreciate that if that's the situation, then yeah, absolutely, you have to go through it to get your profile back. So um, that's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I guess sometimes you've just got to do that if you, um, if you, um, if you, um, if you, um, yeah, if that's the situation. Cheryl, what type of info can you put into the experience section in a construction company? Yeah, so cool. So you could talk without knowing about your business. Um, I, it's a bit tricky, but it could be, you know, it could be um, the types of construction that you do. It could be different locations. Um, it, yeah, it's either the type of construction or the audience. So the like could be the locations, um, the type. I'm just having a think. Um, it could be anything that you do around that as well. So if you do you know, you do the building, but you also do other services there too. So, uh, but having to chat about that specifically, I don't think I know enough to be able to tell you specifically what you would do there. So um, last year, LinkedIn released, um, I did an article about this. They did more than 150 changes um, and we're not going to go through all of them tonight, um, but just some of them I just wanted to kind of touch on with you. Um, first one being uh, the public profile view. So yeah. So when people do search for you now um, in Google, it does look a little bit different um, when people aren't logged in. It's, I don't think that's a big thing. It's just understanding that. Um, your custom button clicks, so they're at the top of your profile if you're in creator mode. So if you are on my profile, you'll see mine's got book an appointment. That's a creator mode feature and they've actually added in some different ones now. So it's, so it's book an appointment, visit my store, my website, etc. Uh, personal profile featured section. So that was that bit where it had the three along there, along the middle. Um, again, they've added more options there. So um, you can even feature like a testimonial um, as well if you want to do that. Um, and talks about hashtags. So this is interesting. Um, if you're in creator mode, 
you set your five talks about hashtags um, and people can search for uh, people who talk about a particular topic. So again, if you're in creator mode, one of the easy things that you can do is just make sure that your talks about hashtags are A, what you talk about and B, what you're using. And LinkedIn likes it if you're in creator mode and you've got talks about hashtags, uh, LinkedIn likes it if you're talking about between two and three of those hashtags in a post. So for example, on my profile, um, I've got five talks about hashtags. One of them is LinkedIn Local Brisbane CBD and one is Brisbane. So whenever I do a, um, and that's again purposeful for whenever I do a post around that, then what's gonna happen is that those, um, they're going to, um, it, it's gonna help because I've said, because if we're saying to LinkedIn, we talk about something, then LinkedIn wants us to talk about something. And I see a lot of people who are, their talks about hashtags don't align. Uh, with what they're actually talking about. All right, so content calendar. So I've got lots of questions there. I'm going to go back through them um, and there's some I'll get to um, in the end as well. I wanted to jump into content. So, um, and that was something that came up uh, in our in our um, questions at the start. So looking at how we can be really strategic with our content. So um, again, just a bit of a gauge. If you can let me know if you're creating content on LinkedIn at the moment, and this is a two-part question. Um, if you're not creating content at the moment, why you're not, or if, or if you are creating content, why you think people aren't. So again, just kind of see where you are with your content. Very little. Yes, I do. Yes. Lots of yeses. Okay, cool. That's awesome. I do a little. Trying to get more consistent. Yeah, that's the thing, hey. Better to post on... Uh, so this is a good question. Trying to trying to be more consistent with content. I'm not sure whether to post in a profile, to post on profile or LinkedIn group. My my without seeing your profile, Rochelle, my inkling is personal profile because that's where you've got your connections. Actually, sorry, I will say it depends on what your objective is with your content. So if your content is about growing your network and getting new people to connect with you, then the groups could be part of that strategy. If your content is to position you as an expert and get people to engage with you, then I would go through your profile. But the other option is to do both, but I would definitely be, in most situations, putting it through your personal profile. Um, LinkedIn groups are interesting. Um, they've put, made a lot of changes to groups. I think groups are underutilized, but I think the challenge LinkedIn has with groups is that if we look at how people interact on LinkedIn in regards to other platforms, People will come to LinkedIn less regularly, but they'll stay for longer. But I think coming less regularly, it makes that kind of flow of group conversation a little bit tricky. So people will visit other platforms like uh, Facebook and Instagram, for example, much more frequently, uh, but they might not stay for long. But what that means is I think groups work much better on there because people are um, have got that touch point much more recently. Yes, let's show more doing. Okay, cool. So we have got lots of different um, variations in what we're doing at the moment. Um, it's interesting. Um, I put together the answer to the question that I get when I ask uh, why people don't do content and top 10 reasons. They don't know what to write. They don't want to overwhelm the audience. They don't know how to make their posts look great. Um, they're afraid of being judged. They're afraid of being wrong. They don't have time. Some people are afraid of negative comments. So that hasn't really come up tonight, which is great. Um, some people will say they just don't see the point. Um, the last two are probably more around corporate, so they'll be very much like, and probably doesn't relate to you guys here, but they'll be very much around. Well, it's my profile. It's it's like my life. I'm not. Um, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Afraid of coming across as salesy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so and this is interesting. So as of 2024, LinkedIn had one million users, yet only three million users share content weekly. So if you are sharing content. Um, then absolutely, like just by doing that, you're, you've made a really, really good start. There are a lot of content consumers on LinkedIn, um, which, and, but, so there's a lot of people on there consuming content. Um, the majority are not creating. So again, gives that really good opportunity uh, for that um, organic content visibility. And this was absolutely expedited during uh, COVID. Um, yeah, so um, went up by 60% in 2020. Um, and, Companies and individual members generated 60% more content as well. Paul made a lot of content when I was in a training group a couple of years ago, very supported now I struggle. Yeah, I know. I think it's, to be honest, I think it's, it, 
it's just about like I batch produce my content. I'll have time in my calendar where I'll go and map out what I'm going to be talking about. Um, the other thing too is I will have, I don't have everything scheduled and mapped. I'd say probably about 70 to 80%, but then I'll drop different things in. Like I might, like if I'm doing something like this, I might do a post around this or things that come up, but I do actually have a lot of it. For me, I do need to have it pre-scheduled. So I think it's just a matter of kind of having that time. Yeah. Pulling it together. I've yeah. tried um, writing a long, longer article mm -hmm. and putting it on my website and then yeah. having three, four, six smaller posts, which are a good size then to put on LinkedIn, my Facebook page yeah. and Google business. And, you know, once I've done that, I can sort of do those half a dozen posts and that, you know, one a week or fortnight, sort of tides mm. me over for a while. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah and that's exactly what I do. Story. <laughs> yeah, I do the same thing. So that's, I'll do a long form article and then basically I'll use that article to create my smaller pieces of content. Okay. Yeah. Um, so not bad for that. Yeah. <laughs> and if I'm using, like anything that I'm creating as a long form is I, I, I don't want to be using, like the amount of effort it takes, I'm like, I'm not creating something that's only going to get used once. Um mm. Yeah, I'll definitely, like, get different. And then how I structure my articles very much, lead, like, I'm about, like, kind of making it easy, right? So I'll do, a lot of my articles are, like, seven reasons, five reasons, um, yeah. and things yeah, like that. And I do that quite. seven separate posts as posts. well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I did, yeah. Yeah, so, again, it's, um, and then also I can use that in different, um, when we get to reach out, that, like, for example, I've got an article which is, like, um, Oh, like so many reasons why you don't, why you think you don't need a social media policy, but why you probably should. Actually, no, a better example is I've got um, one which is seven ways LinkedIn can help construction businesses. And I only say that because there's someone in construction there in here. But mm. if I'm talking to someone about, if I get an inquiry from construction, I can use that as part of my communications. Hey, by the way, I wrote this article, you might be interested. So again, um, and I did a post last week, sorry, I'm getting a bit off track, but I think it's relevant where I did, um, I shared like what my top four posts, my, my top four articles were for the year last year and two of them were industry ones. So my most popular one was the construction one and then um, one was about content and then the third one was about professional association. So it was when, it was really interesting. It was ones that were really targeted um, mm -hmm. to particular industries. But yeah, great question. So how often should we make a post? Yeah, okay, cool. So good question. So I think, Again, I don't have a prescriptive answer for you. I think it's what you can do consistently. I think mm -hmm. if you can be doing, again, there's going to, and I know people are saying that you have to post daily. I don't think you have to post daily. I don't post daily. I'm posting probably between two and three times a week. But I think for mm -hmm. a regular person, if you're posting twice a week, I think that's a really great start. But I think it's about being consistent. So you're going to get much better results if you can post two or three times a week consistently rather than posting for a full week and then going away for two weeks and then coming back. So when you do a post, LinkedIn, it, the algorithm looks at it and there's a few variables. And again, there's no magic recipe. There's things that are going to move it forward and there are things that are going to move it back. And if you posting consistency is one of the things that it likes because it like, like LinkedIn wants people to be on LinkedIn. So if you are consistent with your posting, then um, it's, going to reward you for doing that so again I and I, I haven't the other thing I have is I haven't found any qualifiable data that actually says posting x amount of times a week is the right thing I think it's what you can do consistent consistently but I like mm. the idea of between two and three and mm. that's where personally I've seen people get start to kind of get that traction the algorithm looks at the responses that you get sort of in the first hour and then yeah. the first day and a couple of days down and so on. Yeah. But if you post another one, mm. it chucks that one and looks at your new one mm. so it doesn't bother mm. with the continuing, the long tail of, yeah. of uh, engagement you've got. So, you know, I'd be thinking that don't post too soon. After yeah, you, absolutely. If you a good post out, mm. you're sort of 
wasting algorithm time. Yeah. And again, that's kind of think, out too soon. Yeah, is a reason against that kind of every day because you're not mm. getting that long tail yeah. effect. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But um, content, reason being, um, opportunity as leaders have a voice on LinkedIn and a point of view. So, uh, so okay, what's the preferred type of content? I'm gonna, I'll get to that in just a second. It's a very popular question. Um, for those of you who are new, and I know that there are some people who are um, already creating and publishing content, what I would suggest you do is just kind of look at where you are now and take the next step. So again, if I say to someone who's totally new on LinkedIn, go write an article, they'll go no way, um, or they'll go yes, and then they won't talk to me ever again. So um, it's just about looking at where you are now and taking the next step. So if you're reacting, then look at can you comment? If you're commenting, then can you share? Can you do a post and can you publish as well? Um, content tips, again, this is going to lead into format. Um, like I said, I think people connect with you because they want to hear from you, have a voice. Hashtags we've talked about already. We want to make sure that we're using our hashtags really well. Um, ask and answer questions. I find that works really well. LinkedIn likes engagement. So if you can ask a question um, and get a response, um, if I go back through my content, again, it's where, where I've got comments is where they'll really start to get a lot more traction. Um, and the other one that I find works well is shine the light on others. So it's not necessarily around making the post around myself. Um, I'll do posts around other people. So um, someone said they didn't want to come across salesy. And I think that these are really good ways to do that where you don't. Um, example of that shine the light on others is I went to people in our LinkedIn local group. I asked them what their advice was for people who are new to networking. They gave me all this awesome content that I could then create um, a post about and tag them in. Um, so I was making it all about them, but it was also very valuable um, to our audience. Um, I talked to clients about having three content pillars. So these are like our channels. These are what we're already always talking about. Uh, mine are LinkedIn Digital First and um, LinkedIn Local. They're my three topics. So these are the things that I'm talking about. I'll talk about other stuff, but these are kind of, I see them as like ads. I want to stay on my channels as best I can. Um, I know I'm going really quick, but I know how many slides I've got. And I also know how much time I've got. <laughs> so, so I'm trying to get through them um, as quickly as I can. Um, but I do appreciate I'm going very fast. Oh, no, Paul, I didn't mean that. I, I like questions, so it's good. Um, content of LinkedIn and AI comes up a lot as well. So what is that so yeah so the the updates that they've brought out is obviously um if you've got premium like you can use ai to draft your post i think we're at the point now where people can actually see where a post is being created by by ai um i think if you're using it you do need to be editing it putting your own voice on putting your own um putting your own um experience and context around it um as well but it's interesting, um, the designer one's interesting. So this is based on Microsoft Designer. So it's integrating, it's an integrated function that's gonna help create a graphic. With all the new features, you might not have them yet. They're rolling out at the moment as well. Um, and in creator mode, um, you get um, different suggestions there. Uh, LinkedIn articles and newsletters. Um, so what's important here, again, if you're doing video, interesting, it's now showing the first 60 seconds of that. So I find that's interesting, really kind of pushing into video. LinkedIn collaborative articles are interesting. So I'm not sure if anyone's seen those. So that's where it'll prompt you and it'll say, hey, you know, write your comment on this article. So yeah, Ron's seen them. Again, it's I, I'm not doing them myself. Um, personally, I'm not doing them. Again, reason being is I haven't seen anything tangible from them yet. Um, the skeptical side of me feels like LinkedIn's just garnishing a whole lot of information and data and answers that it can use later. So, and again, I'm like, well, if I write a comment on my art on that, and it's, again, this is just me. There are other people who are say who will say they're amazing and go for it. But for me, I'm like, well, then my comments there with like 20 other comments, and then what's really the value of that? And could I just make that a post? Do you know what I mean? And, and do that as a standalone thing. Um, again, you know, they do roll out these community badges that you can get. Um, the blue one is um, top voice. The orange or yellow one is um, community voice. So this has got to do with those articles. So they've obviously gamified that to try and get that interaction there. Again, I'm not doing them myself. I'm quite skeptical of them, but um, there might be people who are doing them. Now, Peter asked, what's our preferred post type format? So yeah, there's different types of formats um, that you can do. Um, LinkedIn, so if we think about it in the sense of LinkedIn wants people to stay on LinkedIn, right? So basically from a post format perspective, anything that's going to do that. So video does well, but I also appreciate that people don't 
necessarily have the resources or the time for video. Um, so what I'll do a lot of, and you'll see um, in my posts, I do a lot of the carousel posts and they're the ones where people actually have to click through. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because it's getting people to click through um, and it's keeping people on my post longer. Um, so there is a graphic, actually, send me a message afterwards. There is, I've got a graphic in a slide deck which actually has the percentages around that specifically. I can't recall what the numbers are, but I can send it to you. Um, I think it's video carousel, and I'm not sure how the other ones fall, but there, there is some um, data on that if you want to shoot me a message. Um, Pre-recorded, not, yeah, so LinkedIn Live, again, is something I haven't, I've kind of done it with other people. Um, I find LinkedIn Live is challenging um, in the sense of you need to be really committed to it. And if you're going to do it, you need to do it well and be doing it consistently. Um, but LinkedIn Live, if you can if you can nail it, it does really well. Um, but you need to be committed to where I've seen it work really well is where people run it again like a TV show. Like they'll show up every time, like Nick does with this, right? So same time every week. And obviously it's not a LinkedIn Live, but exactly the same principles um, is where LinkedIn Live would work well. And same with this, like if he was just kind of turning up whenever, then people wouldn't know, right? So uh, same sort of thing. Um, I'm just going to scoot through again just so we can get to 20 past 7 um, and keep you guys all on time tonight. Um, so, again, thinking about LinkedIn Messenger, the ones on the screen at the moment, um, this is really an experience that I had and this is what we don't want to do. This person sent me six, seven, eight messages. I haven't replied. It was an experiment. I was seeing how many um, slides that they would uh, how many times they would um, message me. Um, but essentially what we need to do is think about LinkedIn is just a really big database. And um, yeah, David, I'm gonna come back to your question, Ros. Um, is thinking about how we use search. So we can use search as um, in LinkedIn as a Boolean search. So graphic designer, graphic and design or use and or not terms and make some really good lists around um, who we're going to reach out to there as well. So again, I just want to spend some time on um, our data as well. So if we have a look at, again, I'm just going to show you this quickly, but there's a lot of data and analytics available, particularly in um, within creator mode. So again, I can see my whole content performance. I can see my followers. I can see my demographics around that. So this really helps. This was an activity I did at the end of the year is I exported all of this. Um, and then what I do is I use that to um, influence what I'm going to do moving forward. Like I said, I can see what my top posts were and the top one was the construction article followed by LinkedIn local um, and a carousel post. So interestingly enough, going to formats, that was a long form article, uh, that was a carousel and that was a carousel. So um, for me, that's what worked better. And then our company page, we can get all this data as well. Um, post engagement, um, we can do competitor analysis in there. I don't see these people as competitors, but for the purpose of our slides, um, that's what they look like. So. In wrapping up, I know that's been really quick, but I am also mindful that we're working to a time frame tonight. Um, we talked about a lot. Um, so LinkedIn significance, spent some time on profile enhancements, uh, strategic content calendar. Um, we didn't really get into a whole lot of outreach, but again, my advice there would just be look at how you interact with people in the real world and mimic that online. You wouldn't keep talking at people. So look at how you get into a conversation. It's really just about like hitting the ball over, hitting the ball back and getting into a conversation um, and then really jumping into those data and, and that um, analytics as well. So um, if you do want to connect with me on LinkedIn now, you can use the QR code or you could use the QR code decoder um, that Nick shared earlier <laughs> and, and use my QR code, but it goes to my profile. Um, and if you are in Brisbane, um, yeah, absolutely. We would love you to join us at our LinkedIn Local. So LinkedIn Local is where you get to meet the people behind the profiles. Uh, and our next event is on the 28th of February in the evening. Um, and if you connect with me, I can send you a link to that. I'm going to take a, break, a breath, Nick, and hand over to you. <laughs> and is there anything that you'd like to add to that? Awesome. Excellent. I don't know if there's anything I can add. Uh, that was a, uh, a fairly sort of uh, fast uh, look through uh, LinkedIn, which is absolutely fabulous. Uh, and a few things in there I uh, didn't know as well, too. So um, that was excellent. Um, a couple of other questions coming through here at the moment. Um, what do we got there? David, oh, what were you talking about? Do you have any advice on sending people short personalized Loom videos to introduce yourself? 
and your company uh, with the long-term aim of doing business with that person. I'm just that thing and scam. Yeah, excellent. So yeah, and I like the end of that where you said like because you're sending the link. So what I would do is I would maybe frame that before. So I would say, um, I would maybe connect with them, and then once they reply, then I would do that, and I would say I would put in the message that um, I've got like that that that's what it is. So I've recorded a short video for you just to introduce myself. It actually can be quite nice. Um, again, it's just thinking about your audience too and how they consume content. So it, the challenge with video is that sometimes if people are in a public space, um, they might not watch it because of that. Like I'm the same with um, video and audio messages. Sometimes like text is easier because I can, it's not disruptive to people. Um, so think about how your audience consumes as well. Excellent. Someone's asking about, Emma's asking about LinkedIn Local. How does she find yeah. other groups? Yeah, absolutely. So if you Google LinkedIn Local and your area, there should be a host. Um, if you let me know what area you're in or if you send me a message with your area, I could find out who your person is or where your closest one is. But I know there's Sunny Coast, there was Gold Coast, there's, um, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a few about. I think there's Morton Bay as well. Excellent. Yeah. And it's a, it's a global network, is it? Yeah, absolutely. So it was started by a lady in Newcastle called Anna. Um, and there's, and I should know how many, but there's lots and lots and lots of groups. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're all over the world, um, which is pretty exciting. We had someone um, from LinkedIn Local who was the host of LinkedIn Local Vietnam come to our group. And no one knows this yet, so you'll be the first to know. Not this event, the next event, we've got someone who hosts LinkedIn Local in Darwin coming to our group. Fabulous. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, all right. Uh, lead generation, uh, do you wait for people to engage through your content or do you DM them? Yeah, I do a mixture of both. So my content strategy is very aligned to my audience. So if you go through, you'll see there's a whole batch of construction. That's when I was targeting construction. And then I would do a, a strategy which has that content. And then I would also be reaching out to them, inviting them to join my network. On that reach out message, I always end with a question, but not a silly one. It can be just like, would you like to connect question mark? Because then they're more likely to respond. And then and then I basically want to get into a conversation with them. And then I might say along the lines of, oh, I recently wrote an article around how construction companies can use LinkedIn. Um, would you like me to send you a copy? But I make sure that content, so I'm kind of going, the business strategy is this, I'm targeting this. And then so my LinkedIn strategy is both content and con and content and connection. And it might be adding those people and message. They, to answer your question, kind of both work together, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. And if you go Excellent. through, you'll see it. I'll go through themes like I did a whole, you, and you kind of go, oh, and then once people kind of figure out, they'll go, oh, yeah, I cool. I know what you're doing because they'll see what I'm, yeah, what I'm posting about. Anything and else, Henry? Yeah, in terms of pages, can you have multiple company pages, not so much for different businesses or companies, but for different products and services? Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. The complexity around that is you would, well, you could link your, I'm just kind of thinking out loud, you can link your personal profile to them. So that's not so much of an issue. Potentially, they would need their own content strategy. That would potentially be, it would be, I think, yes, absolutely. But it would be, a, there would be a workload there. Um, what you can do through your company pages when you post, you can, there is targeting you can do in there by location, by industry um etc um so for example i do work with businesses who are in new zealand and australia and when they post to their new zealand audience they do it they when they do that post on the company page they just check region and they select new zealand and then their new zealand followers are more likely to see it um as opposed to their australian based followers um but it's all on their company page so you could but i think it would be a lot of work and there might be other ways you can work around it which is not going to force you that much work but without kind of knowing the whole context of the situation um i'm not really sure excellent excellent all right well i'm sure there's lots more questions that um uh, people have uh really um it was an action-packed presentation with lots and lots of information in it uh if people do want to find out more how, how would they best get in touch with you I'm yeah, assuming so you, I didn't say you might be surprised to learn. <laughs> um, yeah, they can connect with me on LinkedIn. And I do, I'm sorry, I haven't got to everyone's question. Um, but I was just mindful of our time. So if I didn't get to your question, feel free to send me a connection uh, message and with your question and I can get back to you there as well. So, yeah. 
Um, now, I do see a hand up there with uh, Charlie. Charlie. Did you have a question, Charlie. Charlie Nichols, was that a hand up for a question? Uh, and, and no, I, I, I'm, 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 I don't know what I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> You're just waving at us. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to listen and work and do everything. I know, it was a lot. Thank There's you, so thank much you. I can, yeah. We could talk Excellent. about LinkedIn for days. So, yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, well, uh, that is our session tonight. And uh, a big thank you tonight uh, for uh, sharing with us, uh, Kylie. Um, but uh, that's not all. So let's well, let's give um, um, Kylie a virtual round of applause to uh, thank her for uh, all of the information. Um, we do have a door prize uh, tonight as well, too, don't we? Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Nick was asking for a door prize, and I was like, well, I think what we could do is do, um, because everyone's got a different situation and things like that, uh, what we can do is uh, for a door prize is um, do like a, I can do a, like a profile review um, and give specific feedback on your profile and your strategy and things like that. Um, and then just go through maybe some coaching for about an hour um, within that time as well. Fabulous. Anyone want that? Give us your hand up. If uh, We can pull you out of the draw if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a special way of drawing this uh, as ever. So uh, let's bring up our wheel of names which is on screen everybody's name is in there remember the rules of this game here is you have to be in the room to win if you have disappeared early then uh we draw your name then uh, we just do a redraw all right let's spin that wheel and uh, see who our lucky winner is tonight and a virtual drum roll please as we are watching it spin around and our winner is oh it's on the line andy oh. are you are you still? Yeah, you're close I, there. Uh, definitely close. here. <laughs> <You're> here <laughs> Superb. Well, you're the um, the lucky winner today. So Looks congratulations. Like Thank you. Uh, what we'll do is um, uh, we'll connect you with um, uh, Kylie tomorrow by by email, or maybe we'll do a LinkedIn introduction. I don't know. We'll do something like that to uh, connect you together, and uh, then you can organise um, your session. Excellent. Well, that is a wrap for Business Owners Smashing It Online, uh, the second session for 2024. What a fabulous session it was as well. Hopefully you've got lots of information and uh, notes to take back to uh, improve your profiles and uh, hope you improve your engagement and uh, your business to business um, uh, contacts or oh, and business to consumer as well too. Thanks, Ron. Um, if you uh, enjoyed this and uh, maybe you didn't quite catch all of the information uh, that was there, then uh, this will be up on the Smashgo YouTube channel uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and um, if you uh, subscribe to the channel and click that little bell uh, beside the subscribe button, you'll get a notification to let you know that it is up on uh, the channel. Um, if you think anyone else might uh, enjoy this as well and the information, feel free to share that. So it's publicly available for you to uh, share as well too. Um, uh, remember, if you are not a member of Business Owners Smashing It Online, uh, then uh, now's a good time to click that uh, uh, link to go and join that on uh, Facebook. I know a few people did that during the session and I think we've got everyone to uh, let you in there. Uh, remember, now is a good time to save the chat as well. So all of those apps and tools and questions and bits and pieces are in the chat. So uh, if you click the three little dots on the top right-hand side of chat, that will download it to your computer. And when it does download, there'll be a link there uh, that will, uh, if you click on it, it'll take you to exactly where it is on your computer. So that is our session tonight. Thanks very much, uh, everyone, for coming along. And especially uh, thank you, Kylie, for uh, coming and sharing your uh, knowledge and expertise as well. I can see why you're ranked as number two. In fact, I think you should be number one in uh, oh, Asia. Thank you. Presenting. <laughs> All of that, uh, you've got. <laughs> thank you for it's having fun. me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Pleasure. All right. Well, have a sensational evening and uh, we'll see you all back again next week.